This is an introduction to the chord accompaniment section in my volume one method book. That's a free 100 page method book. You can download the PDF for free. There's no sign up or anything like that. Just follow the link in the description. At the end of my classical guitar method, there's a chord accompaniment section. So today we're going to be talking about when to start the chord accompaniment section in your studies, um, how to practice the chords in the section and just some things, some practice tips um, to give you some context about how you might go about practicing them. And also we're going to answer the question of why do classical guitarists need to learn chords? You know, like chord chart diagrams like any popular music um, guitarist might learn. So I will be making videos for every piece in the chord accompaniment section, but this video is just an, an introduction to get some context on, on why we're doing it and how to go about it and some priorities that you might want to keep track of. In the chord accompaniment section, there are two kind of styles of chord accompaniment that we cover. One is just strumming. That's what you see all the time on guitar. You know, the, the basic idea of strumming chords. But the other way is um, finger style accompaniment. So taking chords and turning them into arpeggios. And, and and arpeggiating the chords. And that's another style of accompaniment. So we'll be covering both of those styles in the chord accompaniment section. Why do classical guitarists need to like read chord diagrams and like and do all this? Like I thought we were learning classical guitar. Well, I did separate the two sections in the book. You have the classical guitar method, and then you have the chord accompaniment section. And the learning chords is really important. As a classical guitarist, there's a number of reasons why you should learn chords. For one thing, um, these chords are going to come up in your classical guitar pieces all the time. You know, the shapes of C and the shapes of D and G. These are shapes that will come up in your classical guitar pieces all the time and people will call out to you like, oh, it's that's the C shape there. Um, you want to know these shapes. It, that, it's really important just from that perspective. It's also very good for your um, just like your left hand dexterity, you know, like jumping into these chord shapes, um, really good for finger independence. You have to move a whole bunch of fingers all at once. And it's just really good for, for being able to like learn left hand shapes, lots of shapes. It's like technique work, essentially. The other reason I really um, like to teach chords as well is that um, it's a great way to study rhythm in a natural way and kind of away from music notation. You know, thinking about just counting the beat and then and then just doing a musical activity to the beat um, is a real natural way to engage with a musical rhythm without it being like a mathematical thing where you're working out exactly what the rhythm is and seeing it in music notation. Instead, you're kind of a little bit more free. And you know, a lot of methods out there um, begin by teaching just by ear and this is an opportunity for you to infuse your playing and your muscles with with rhythm but in a very um, natural and musical way and the other reason is just that classical guitar should be able to do the basic things that popular music players do you know if you go to someone's birthday party you should be able to play happy birthday or if you're if you're just hanging out with people at a barbecue maybe you can join them in a jam session it's just like um it's a skill that you should have classical musicians shouldn't be um trying to like discourage that kind of behavior it's a natural part of music um, that you should explore at least a little bit it's also a great way to explore music theory and learn you know about how chords are made um and uh, the other thing too is like it's good to just like sit around and experiment with your instrument and have fun and not always be um, too hardcore. I like to separate with my students. I do like my lessons. We do a lot of like classical work at the beginning. We like very strict about the method book and the technique and everything. And then we kind of, we kind of mess around at the end and have some fun with some chord songs and do other activities so that we don't get, you know, trapped in a box of, of classical music, but instead we're, we're musicians. We're just musicians and we explore music in lots of different ways. Another really important reason classical guitarists should learn these chord, this chord accompaniment section is that word accompaniment. Sometimes when you're playing a duet or a chamber music piece or you're accompanying a singer, 
um, you, you need to learn how to work with them. And accompaniment is a fine art in itself. A good accompanist has a fine set of skills and they're able to follow singers. They also know what, what's more important than the notes is sometimes keeping the rhythm and working with the um, person that you're accompanying and making sure that you're not overpowering the accompanist or the soloist. So sometimes we need to make sure that we're not strumming too loud and that we can hear the singer or the other person playing the melody. Um, so there's a whole set of skills connected to accompaniment, and we can't dive into that in super depth in a beginner method book, but with chords we can, because you're doing very little. Sometimes you're just strumming one chord, so we can learn how to play a little softer than the soloist. We can learn how to give them a nice good beat structure and uh, to, you know, to the counting, and we can learn to follow them if they're not quite rhythmically tight or if they're using rubato. So there's all these important accompaniment skills that we, we learn as well. The chord accompaniment section is best studied with a teacher or playing along with the videos that I'm creating. However, um, if you're practicing them on your own, because sometimes you'll just be in the practice room and you'll want to practice them on your own, I just, I'd highly recommend that you do at least two different things. One is count and strum. So if you're playing like the first piece, it'd be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And as you count, I want you to look at the, the beats of the bar and just, and just make sure that you're strumming on each beat and counting as you, as you go. That way you stop at the correct place. It, it can be uh, kind of strange if you're just strumming and counting, but make sure you're looking at the page as well. Um, the other way would be to sing the songs. So it might be a little bit tricky though because it's a beginner method book. If you've worked really far through the method book, you might be able to read the melodies, like the first one. But you know, if you haven't, that's okay. If you know the melody, you can sing along, but if you don't, just count and strum and play along with the videos or play along with your teacher. Uh, that would be the preferred way to do it is to, with your teacher because it's more flexible that way, you know, um, you'll learn more communication skills with other musicians. But if you don't have a teacher, then, then just count and play with these pieces and also um, f play along with the videos because I'm creating all those play along videos that you can watch. Just follow the link to the book and look at the lesson section. When you're sitting and studying this at the chord section, I would recommend you sit in the classical position for now. Later on, you can sit in like the popular music um, style. But while you're establishing your classical guitar technique, I recommend that you uh, stick to it for the chord section here. Okay, when should you start the chord section of the book? I would recommend that after you've done a few pieces in the beginning of the classical guitar method, that you then start in working on the chord section. So once you can, once you understand like bars and like four, three beats per bar, um, and the basics of, of, of just counting through a bar and whatnot, uh, then I think that you can begin playing the chord section. Um, just, you, it's nice to have a little bit of context first, so I would do that. Okay, so how are we going to practice chords? We're studying classical guitar, and so this is a chords accompaniment section for classical guitarists. And what I'll say is that um, we are going to play it a little bit different than popular music musicians. I do get my students to learn how to use a pick and things like that, but for the sake of, of these lessons, let's just stick with the thumb. So we're going to use the thumb to just strum the strings. So. Whenever you're practicing any of these chords in the chord section, you want to be thinking about what your main, um, your main purpose is as, as a member of the rhythm section. So the guitar and the drums, the bass, you know, like in the rhythm section. Um, and that's rhythm. So if you're in 4-4 four, four time, your main goal is going to be keeping the beat, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, one, and it's nice if you give a little bit of an extra push on the first beat. So that's in terms of context for studying this and context for accompaniment is that you're trying to give the song a beat structure and a rhythm structure 
And also for whoever's singing, they should know where the first beat is or if they're just playing along with you, you know, where's the first beat? And so I think when you're practicing it, you can make that very obvious. Usually we would count ourselves in, so like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Rhythm has a hierarchy. Usually the first beat in 4-4 four, four is like the strongest. So you'd have strong, weak, medium, strong, weak. One, two, three, four. A little bit of a push on the first beat. And the way we're going to play is we're going to use the side of our thumb, the fleshy side of our thumb, and we're gonna brush the strings, whether you're brushing down or up. When you're, when you're playing, sometimes you have to be specific about what strings you're hitting, but don't be too picky. This isn't like part of your strict classical um, training. This is more about rhythm. But you know, there will be times when you have to be a little bit precise. But don't worry about hitting each string perfectly. You actually want more of a, a percussive rhythmic effect. And it should sound nice, and we're gonna, using the fleshy part of your thumb will produce a very soft, um, pleasant and gentle sound on the classical nylon string guitar. Um, but I think that's good for now. And when you start doing up strums, when you're doing your up strum, don't be too picky about how many strings you're hitting. When you're going down, I would be a little bit picky about what string, how many strings you're supposed to strum. But on the way up, brush them and try to brush only the strings that you're supposed to. But don't worry if you miss like the bottom string or something like that. A little bit of arm movement is fine, and a little bit of wrist movement is fine too. Nice and relaxed, nothing to it. So I, when we go over all the pieces, we'll be counting and playing them, and then also I'll do a split screen where you get to hear the piece and strum along with me. But that's just some context about how you want to approach this chord section of the book.